Okay, welcome to this video. This is basically a second part to the first video to derive the displacement function uh, as uh, a function of time with the parameters v initial and v final. In other words, we took the average velocity times the time. And in the last video, I showed you some graphs and I showed you the concept of average value and how we can take any graph. We can take the average value times the time. We can convert it into like a square and find out that value. Okay. In this video, I'm going to take the same concept. I'm going to take average value of the velocity times the time, but I'm going to use calculus to derive the average value. So it's going to be a little bit longer. It's going to seem like more work. And in this case, it is because we know that we have an average value here that's a line that we could have just used a simple application here. The average value is just in the middle. Okay. But in this case, I'm going to go through the formal derivation just because um, when you have a complex function, maybe a second or third order and you want to find the average value um, th this this is a, a a better way to do it through calculus I think I mean it's it's this the only way to do it uh, when we have a line we know what's going on but uh, but higher order equations are a little more difficult to work with so we have the area in this case we know that the the displacement okay equals the area times the average velocity times the time so that's what I'm going after right now. I'm going to go on a little quest here to derive the average velocity using calculus. So what is average velocity? Well, very very briefly, average velocity here is defined as 1 over b minus a evaluated across the integral from a to b. I'm going to use this velocity function v as a function of t times dt. Okay? This would be the area. Okay, and this I'm dividing. I'm basically dividing out one of the sides. So you know, if we talk about what what are we really doing here? Well, the area would be this, right? And if I divide out uh, one of the sides, remember this is this is you know base times height, right? Well, basically, if I divide out the base, right, I'm just left with the height, and that's the average value. Okay, so it's it's pretty simple application. Here, what is b? What is a? Well quite simply, b is t initial, a is t final. And if I took that integral from t initial to t final, and now my velocity function, we derived that before, right? What is that? That's simply going to be vo plus at times dt, whole thing times dt. So now I can evaluate this integral, okay, across this these given boundaries from t initial to t final, okay? So one one divided by t final minus t initial, and I'm going to go ahead and evaluate that now, okay? So what's what what's going that's going to end up being is this. I'm going to have v initial times time, right? Because that's the same as t to the zero, right? So I add one and divide plus a t squared over two. Okay, and I'm going to evaluate that expression from t initial to t final. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do my little shortcut here with the t initial. I'm going to assume that that's zero, and I'm going to assume that that's zero. So it's going to clean up our equation just a little bit. We're going to get through this a lot quicker. So when I finally go ahead and derive this, I'll change the color here. So I'm going to get my average value here is going to equal 1 over t times v initial t plus a t squared over 2. So that's my expression right there. That's my final expression. I need to clean it up a little bit. I need to go through now and start canceling out because I'm dividing by t here. So this can cancel out with this one and this will cancel out with one of these. So if I rewrite that, get my average velocity is simply going to equal what? V initial plus AT over 2, right? Okay, well that would be great if I wanted to find out the average velocity as a function of velocity acceleration of time, but I don't. I want it in terms of what? I want it in terms of just v initial, v final. So again, I have to eliminate a parameter here. So my acceleration here 
is going to be v final minus v initial over t final minus t initial. Okay, so if I take that parameter and I plug it in here and I eliminate acceleration, I can get a new equation that just has those velocities. Now there's many ways to do this. We could have eliminated the parameter from the beginning, okay? But I'm just showing you that we wanted to go back to that original equation that we had. So I can eliminate it here. So once I eliminate that parameter, uh, wh what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get V initial plus, I'm going to have this here, V final, remember that T is zero, V final minus V initial over t times t over 2 right here okay and so these times are going to cancel out one of these times is going to cancel out right here and what am I going to be left with well my v average my average value is going to be vo plus v over 2 minus VO over 2. And again, we're going to go back and group our terms right here. So VO minus VO over 2 is just going to give us VO over 2, right? So my average velocity in terms of just the velocities here is going to give me VO over 2 plus V over 2. So my average velocity here is just going to be VO plus V over 2 okay and now we've got we basically did all of that work just to come back to the same conclusion that we could have by saying the average value is the middle point here because it's a line right so it definitely seems like overkill in this case right I mean that's a lot of work to get down to the same conclusion that we had before but the point of this video is just to show you how to do it it's not I mean it's not it's not to do this for a linear function we, w we wouldn't do this for a linear function okay we wouldn't we wouldn't want to do this we would we would always look for the simplest way to solve the the, the problem so now we can basically go back to what we were looking for in the first place, which was the delta x is the average velocity times the time. So we can go back to what we were searching for now. Delta x is the average velocity times the time. So what's my average velocity? Now my average velocity is this right here. So delta x is going to equal v initial plus v over 2 times the time. So that's your final equation using calculus to derive it. Um, not a bad way to learn how to use average value. It's, it's, a, it's a useful function. We get into it a lot more with electricity and magnetism. We're dealing with sine waves and all of these crazy things happening with, with electricity. But the bottom line is this is a very good equation to use with kinematics and it's a very good equation uh, to, to derive because you learn a lot of concepts. Alright, that's all for this video. Check back in the next video as I start to derive even more kinematics equations by eliminating the parameter of time. Talk to you soon.